Have you ever found yourself yearning, even longing for love, feeling like it's the missing piece that would finally complete your life? Society often portrays love as the ultimate goal, the pinnacle of human experience, the magical solution to all our problems. But what if we told you that this incessant chase for love might actually be more of a hindrance than a help in finding true happiness and contentment? Hello, and welcome to our deep dive into a perspective that might just challenge everything you've been taught about love. Today, we're going to take a step back in time and explore the wisdom of the ancient Stoics. Stoicism, a school of philosophy founded in the 3rd century BC, taught that virtue, the highest good, is based on knowledge and that the wise live in harmony with divine reason that governs nature. The Stoics had some incredibly insightful things to say about our emotions, especially when it comes to love. They believed that our emotions should not rule us, but rather, we should understand and manage them. What could this possibly have to do with our modern pursuits of love? Stick around as we unravel the Stoics' teachings and explore why they believe that we should not chase love. As we delve into the Stoic viewpoint on love, it's important to understand the perspectives of some of its most influential thinkers. Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and Epictetus, among others, contributed significantly to the Stoic interpretation of love. Seneca, a prominent Stoic philosopher, wrote extensively about emotions, including love. He believed that love is a natural and necessary part of life, but he warned against allowing it to consume you. To Seneca, love, like all emotions, must be moderated and controlled. It should not become an obsession that diverts us from our path towards virtue and wisdom. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and a devoted Stoic, echoed similar sentiments. In his famous work, Meditations, he stressed the importance of maintaining control over our emotions, reminding us that we have the power to shape our perceptions and responses. Epictetus, a former slave turned philosopher, taught that our tranquility depends on distinguishing between what we can control and what we cannot. And while we cannot control whether someone else loves us, we can control how we respond to these feelings. At the heart of Stoicism is the concept of preferred indifference. These are aspects of life that are not inherently good or bad, but can contribute to a good life if used correctly. Love, to the Stoics, falls into this category. It's not a virtue in itself, nor is it something inherently evil. Rather, love is something that can add value to our lives, but it should not be our ultimate goal or determine our happiness. It's a radical perspective, isn't it? Especially when contrasted with the narratives that were often fed about love being the ultimate source of happiness and fulfillment. Yet the Stoics believe that true peace comes from within, not from external factors, not even from love itself. But what do we mean when we say chasing love? In essence, to chase love is to make finding a romantic partner the primary goal in life. It's the relentless pursuit of love, often to the exclusion of other pursuits and personal development. When we're chasing love, we're constantly seeking someone else to complete us, to fulfill us, and to give our life meaning. On the surface, this might not seem like such a problematic approach. After all, love is a beautiful and enriching part of human experience. But when we dive deeper, it's clear that this mindset can lead to an array of problems. Firstly, it places our happiness in someone else's hands. When we chase love, we often attach our sense of self-worth and happiness to whether or not we're in a romantic relationship. When we're single, we may feel incomplete or as though we're failing. But the Stoics would argue that this is a misplaced source of value. They believed in finding contentment within oneself rather than looking for it in external factors. Secondly, when we're so focused on finding love, we may end up neglecting other important aspects of our lives, such as our personal growth, our passions, or our friendships. We can become so absorbed in our pursuit that we lose ourselves, our individuality, and the qualities that make us unique. Thirdly, chasing love can lead us into unhealthy relationships. When our primary goal is to be in a relationship, any relationship, we can overlook red flags, tolerate mistreatment, or settle for partners who aren't right for us. We can become so desperate to find love that we lose sight of what a healthy, respectful, and fulfilling relationship should look like. And finally, chasing love can be an endless, unsatisfying pursuit. If we're constantly looking for love, we're always living in the future, always looking for the next thing. 
We're never present, never satisfied with what we have now. As Seneca said, he who is everywhere is nowhere. Chasing love, therefore, can lead to a life of discontent, constant striving, and ultimately, unhappiness. But this doesn't mean the Stoics were against love. On the contrary, they valued it, but they advocated for a different, more mindful approach. Let's delve deeper into Stoicism's lessons on love. Take Epictetus, for instance, a former slave who became one of the most influential Stoic philosophers. His teachings centered around the idea of control, distinguishing between the things we can control and those we can't. Love, according to Epictetus, falls into the latter category. In the discourses he advises, remember that you must behave in life as at a dinner party. Is anything brought around to you? Put out your hand and take your share with moderation. Does it pass by you? Don't stop it. Is it not yet come? Don't stretch your desire towards it, but wait until it reaches you. What he's saying here is to appreciate love when it comes your way, to engage fully with it when it's present in your life, but not to desperately reach out for it when it's not present or to hold on to it too tightly when it tries to leave. Another eminent Stoic philosopher, Seneca, taught that one should love without attachment, knowing that all things are temporary. This is not to promote emotional detachment or indifference, but to foster resilience in the face of change and loss. Seneca counseled, he who loves with desire is always anguished. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, echoed these sentiments in his meditations. He wrote, Accept the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. This advice encourages us to wholeheartedly engage with love when it comes into our lives, but to do so without clinging or desperation. These stoic lessons on love guide us towards a healthier and more resilient approach to love. They advise us to appreciate love, to enjoy it, to engage with it fully, but not to make it the sole focus of our lives or the sole source of our happiness. In essence, love should be part of our lives, not the entirety of it. Adopting the stoic view of not chasing love can drastically improve your life. This might seem counterintuitive in a world where we're often told to go after what we want with relentless determination, but Stoicism teaches us a more nuanced approach. Firstly, not chasing love can lead to a profound sense of emotional resilience. When we attach our happiness and self-worth to whether or not we're in a romantic relationship, we become susceptible to emotional turmoil. By taking a step back and not fervently seeking love, we can create an emotional equilibrium that remains stable whether or not love is present in our lives. Secondly, not chasing love encourages self-fulfillment. It's easy to fall into the trap of believing that we need another person to complete us. Stoicism, however, promotes the idea that we're already complete and capable of finding fulfillment within ourselves. When we stop chasing love, we can dedicate more time and energy towards personal growth, towards understanding ourselves, towards nurturing our passions and interests. We learn to find contentment within ourselves, making us more self-reliant and resilient. It's not about avoiding love or being indifferent to it, but rather about letting love come to you in its own time, in its own way. Transitioning from a mindset of chasing love to one of acceptance and self-fulfillment is no small feat. It requires introspection, patience, and commitment. So how can we put these stoic principles into practice in our everyday lives? Here are some practical steps you can take self-awareness start by recognizing your patterns are you constantly seeking validation from others are you jumping from one relationship to another out of fear of being alone being honest with yourself about these patterns is the first step towards change self-love instead of seeking love externally start cultivating it within yourself practice self-care activities nurture your interests and build a life you love irrespective of whether you're in a romantic relationship or not Remember, you are already whole. Embrace solitude. Stoics believed in the value of solitude. It gives us space to understand ourselves better, to reflect, and to grow. Start spending time alone and learning to enjoy your own company. Patience. In the age of dating apps, it's easy to get caught up in the chase for love. Instead, practice patience. Let love come to you organically at its own pace. Mindful relationships. When you do enter a relationship, keep stoic principles in mind. Maintain your independence. 
Don't make the relationship your sole source of happiness and ensure there's mutual respect and understanding. Emotional resilience. Learn to manage your emotions better. Stoicism doesn't mean not feeling anything, but it means not letting your emotions control your actions and decision-making. Practicing mindfulness can be a good starting point here. Remember, it's a journey. There will be days when you'll struggle, and that's okay. Change takes time, but with each step you take, you're moving closer towards a life of emotional resilience, self-fulfillment, and healthier relationships. The Stoics taught us that we can appreciate love when it's present, let go when it's not, and always maintain our inner peace and self-respect. In the words of the renowned Stoic philosopher Seneca, the man who is serene and tranquil is not the man who has fled from things, but who remains their master. May we all strive to become masters of our emotions and our lives. Thank you for joining us in this journey through Stoicism and its perspective on love. If this video brought you value, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more content like this. Remember, self-improvement is a journey that we are all on together. Until next time, keep growing, keep learning, and strive to be the best version of yourself. See you soon.